webinar, which will start us a recording. And I'll see if folks are in the will come in as attendees. Okay, there's a um, there is a message from Myra that she is trying to get um, to get in. So she's working on. Jim, did you have trouble logging in? I no, did no, not. I to, oh, just a little late. Okay, all right. Um, I see three folks in the attendees. Let me. That's Sarah and Asa. Let me change them. I've um, already started. Okay, all right, all right, all right. And I let Chris Brestrup in as well. Yeah. Okay. Are it's you feeling right. any better? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, feel free to sign off when you need to. Yeah, thank you. So, um, pursuant to the governor's order, oh. just, sorry. Sorry, Tom. Right. Uh, yeah. Asa, can you um, wait just a second until uh, we try to get um, more folks in? Yes. Sorry. Okay. Jennifer, I'm trying to get Saren in, but it doesn't seem like she's coming out. It says that she's declining, I so I don't know. Okay, let me... Let's see if I can send her a message. Emily, you're muted. I'm sorry. Siren, can you unmute? I just want to make sure that you're in and can hear us. Siren? There you are, Siren. Okay. All right. <laughs> Good. All right. Okay. Um, I think that um, um, we're just waiting for Myra to try to um, to get in again. I'm gonna go off screen and send her a message, and I'm expected that Ian and um, that Ian would be here. I'm not sure about Cody. He might have a conflict. Um, and um, and Marty is not able to attend. Oh, there's Myra now. Okay. All right. So I think. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Myra. Yes. Okay. What a mess. I am so sorry. I have no idea what happened. No, that's all right. Um, I think the only person that we're uh, expecting who's not here um, might be Ian. Um, but you have. Uh, Elise, Saren, Jim, and yourself. Um, okay, and I know Marty won't be here, and I know Cody won't be here. Right. So, but we do have a quarum. You do have a quorum. Yes. So, so we might as well get started. Yeah. I am so sorry. I have no idea what happened to my computer. Did you get my note that yes, I couldn't I, get in? I okay. did. And okay. um, so I'm about to go off screen, and um, Asa is going to read the plenum. Okay, thank you. Legalese. All right. Hope you feel better, Pamela. Thank yeah. you. All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, pursuant to the governor's orders suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18, 
This meeting, the Disability Access Advisory Committee meeting, is being conducted via remote participation. You can take roll call to check to make sure everyone's video and audio is working properly. All right. Um, Myra? I'm here. Um, Sarah? Here. James? Here. Elise? Here. Here. Yes. Um, Okay. Yes. Um, so we can get started with our, thank you very much, Asa. I appreciate that. And I don't know if Pamela has disappeared or just gone off screen. Is is Pamela planning to stick around or is she- I, I'm going to try to stick around oh, okay. and, and okay. listen in, but I am off screen. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so the first thing we need to do is find out uh, if does anybody have any? Well, we can do public comment. I guess is there anyone here for com public comment about items not on the agenda? I don't know. There's no one in your attendees at the moment. Okay, cool. Thanks, Jennifer. That is Jennifer, right? It is I. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know who's on the screen. I didn't have time to check. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so if there's no one there, then we can see if anyone has any announcements before we get to the meat of the agenda. I have one, which is that next month's meeting is gonna be devoted to the Hickory Ridge Trails project. Um, we have people coming from conservation, Jennifer Mullins, I believe the assistant town manager. Um, so we're gonna have a whole house, full house of presenters and they're really interested in our input and hopefully they will get us materials that we can read um, early enough so that we can you know, really participate fully. Um, but anyway, so that's the next agenda. Um, all right, we have some guests who are going to talk about the new elementary school project, um, which is pretty well underway as far as the planning. Um, and Kathy Sh uh, Shane from the, um, from the town council is one of the, I don't know if you are the only co uh, chair of the committee or if you're a co-chair, but she has agreed to come and talk to us about the elementary school. I don't think they intended to do that eventually, uh, originally. So, I appreciate the people who are gonna be doing the presentation for giving up time that they didn't expect to give up so we could talk about things. Cause we always seem to find something that architects miss and sometimes they're very significant things. So um, Kathy, are you there? So Kathy is not at this meeting. Um, I'm, I'm I, She was not able to attend. I'm Margaret Wood. Oh, I'm okay. what's called the owner's project manager. So every, um, public school project in Massachusetts that receives funding from the Massachusetts School Building uh, uh, has authority, <laughs> like tripping over my words today, the Mass, Mass School Building Authority has <laughs> someone like myself who is hired as a independent consulting project manager. So Kathy delegated to me just kind of doing a super brief intro about the project. And really the most of the presentation is gonna be made by Donna Danisco and Tim Cooper, who are the lead architects on the project, the lead designers. So um, just for to kind of bring you up to date. So you, you all might remember that there was an earlier project back, I would say it was probably started back around 2015 or 16 um, that failed its local vote. The proposed project is to combine the two elementary schools um, and into a single building. And so after the earlier failed vote, uh, this project restarted in 2021. And then Denisco Design was hired as the designer. And we're kind of, I would say, kind of midstream in the design. I mean, it's a perfect time actually to come and talk to you all because the 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 boundary conditions of the designer established and um, the 
uh, would always have been part of our process to come see you. So thank you for making time in our agenda. So again, consolidating two schools on the Fort River site and building the building while the existing Fort River school stays active. Um, it's a The school is brand new, net zero design, but for the purposes of the discussion here, I just wanna say the fact that it's new building means that you know, we can meet every aspect of uh, the access code. And we really want to exp you sort of show you what's what how the project works and hear your thoughts. So um, Great, I'm gonna you. turn it over to Donna and Tim who are gonna really make this presentation. And uh, thank you all for coming together to meet with us. Okay, excellent. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> Donna and Tim, I just wanna say um, before we get started, we have one person on this committee who is a low vision person, um, and we have me who is a totally blind person. So we need much more descriptive than uh, information than uh, normally you would give to other committees. Um, and the materials you sent, unfortunately, have no narrative really. Um, they were pretty much useless to me, um, but I did contact somebody to find out a little bit about what was in them. I don't expect you to start from zero, but um, if you can be very descriptive in what you talk about, that will help uh, Elise and me. Yeah, thank you, Myra. I was able to read some of the description, but a lot of the pictures didn't, you know, and mapping didn't make much sense to me. Okay. So, so good afternoon and, and thank you, um, Myra, for your comments. And I think, um, as architects, uh, we we use pictures far more than words, um, which which doesn't doesn't make uh, this communication as as easy or seamless as as it could be. So, I we're typically rushed. We're typically like use few words, get through the presentation. The images speak for themselves. So, with that, um, <laughs> Kathy gave me all the latitude to talk as long as I want today, <laughs> um, using uh, descriptors for for the presentation. So, uh, we see this more as a dialogue. If you want further explanation or um, context of what I'm talking about, please feel free. Just interrupt us. It's a small group, um, and and we're here for conversation as well as just to bring you up to date where we are with the project. Um, so for those of you that uh, are able to see the screen, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, just making sure everyone oh, wait, can oh. see it. Uh, I'm just trying to move my mouse here. Uh, so so with that, and, and thank you again, I'm Donna Danisco, and with me is Tim Cooper. Uh, we're both with Danisco Design, and it has truly been wonderful. Uh, working with the town of Amherst on this really important project for um, the town. I know Margaret gave a brief introduction, so we'll just start with where we are today. So the new, we're calling it the new Amherst Elementary School. We're not calling it the Fox Hill School anymore because we're merging both Brightwood, I mean, Wildwood and Fort River. So it is the uh, Amherst Elementary School is how we're referring to it. The new elementary school is going to be constructed on the uh, Fox, the Fort River site. And the existing Fort River School will remain in operation while the new school is constructed. Once the new school is built, the students will move into that building and then the existing building will be demolished and then we'll finish up the site which will consist of some parking but um, mostly community fields. So we, we've spent a lot of time talking about the the function and and of the site right as it relates to circulation, the various means of transportation entering the site, the site amenities, the site amenities for the school, as well as the site amenities for the entire community. So what we've done is uh, the new school will be constructed 
to the south of the existing building. There'll be ample separation, clear separation with construction fences. And we have phased diagrams, which we're not gonna show today, but, but we have worked out all of the details of how the two school and um, contractor can remain on a site, but function independent independently and completely safely for the staff and students of this. I'll of interrupt with one question because I know it'll come up. Yes. Um, the, the parking that exists for the existing Port River School will not Im be implicated by this I at all? I keep losing my connection. Oh, do you hear me? We do. Yeah, we do hear you. So I'm sorry. The... I keep losing my connection. Tim, are you having problems? I think I can hear anything. If you can hear me, uh, I am coming through. We can hear you. Okay. I can answer the question about the parking wall Donna resolves her yeah. uh, issues. So um, the existing parking, which is uh, uh, two lanes west of the existing building, will be impacted by the construction in various phases. So in the first phase, um, the early site package, when the site is prepared for the new building, about a third of that parking lot will be off limits for school use. Uh, so there will be a fence in the parking lot that will take that part off. And then we are working with the school to um, make sure that the traffic patterns of the buses and the cars as they enter the site will function not quite the same, but um, equally safely uh, and efficiently as they do now. Um, and I should also mention the existing site has an entrance and an exit. It has a entrance at the southwest corner and an exit at the northwest corner. So once construction starts and the fence goes up, the what is now the entrance will be an entrance and exit for construction vehicles only. And all school traffic will enter and exit from the northern side entrance uh, so that the traffic will be separated for um safety and efficiency of everyone involved and you're going to um, be able to create temporary hp van accessible spaces there that um, will have a proper top topography so that people who are using vans can get in and out um so yes, we are working with Rupert, the director of facilities and the director of transportation um, and also the principal of the school. So the current thinking is um, there will be a van pull off at the southern end of the loop, which is essentially equal with the existing drive, uh, but at the south end of the building, which will be just north of the fence. So as part of this early phase, there will have to be some minor work done. So there's an existing median between the two halves of the parking lot. There will have to be cut throughs um, created. Uh, there will also have to be some um, turn widening for buses to move in new paths. And then as part of that work, there's also going to be the um, pull off that you were describing that would allow vans well, to- Actually, that's not what I was describing. I'm talking about staff who are using vans, uh, community people who use vans, who don't mm -hmm. want to pull off. They want to be able to park their vehicle close to the school in a way that, they're, that the slopes are fine for them to get into mm -hmm. the building. Quite frequently in construction, the handicapped parking, the van accessible parking, I don't mean pull off for people who are being mm -hmm. delivered, but I mean the parking is often impacted and forgotten about. That's exactly what happened downtown. Um, and we wanna make sure, you know, there there are potentially staff members who, uh, who mm -hmm. use wheelchairs and there are certainly potentially parents who use wheelchairs and they need to be able to have full access to the building during construction, to the oh. old build. So that's what I wanna know. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Uh, uh, so the existing accessible handicap uh, parking spaces in the lot uh, will remain during construction. So okay. they are located directly out the front door as, as you exit. And that most of them are on the school side of the median. I think there's one or two on the other side of the median, okay. but still only a few feet away. Um, all of those will be unimpacted by the construction of the school and the initial clearing of the site. Perfect. Okay, thank you. 
I, I'm back, but Tim's doing a great job. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll we're, we're, we'll, we'll we'll tag team this then. How's that? So, so um, Tim, though, I think we have to. One of us will have to mute. Oh. Sorry, we're getting. Thank you. Um, so, as Tim mentioned, right, there are two drives entering the site. We have the one to the south, which um, it, right now the traffic circulation is you enter from the south and you exit from the north driveway. Uh, what we're going to be doing with the new school is the south entrance, which will remain where it currently is, will be used for bus and van access only. And then the north drive entrance drive will be used for vehicular parent drop-off, visitors, staff, will be used and and that too will be a um in and out out of the north driveway so it will be a circular one-way pattern you enter you loop through the parking lot you there's drop off at the main entry of the school and then you would uh return out the north driveway for parents visitors and staff uh, as as far as handicap accessibility, we have uh, one, two, three, four handicap um, spots right at the main entry closest to the school. We also have some additional handicap parking to the north, which is where the community fields will be. We felt that it was important to provide um, access at both the community fields as well as the school. There'll be quite a few parking spaces, about 120 parking spaces. And this, as um, Margaret mentioned, is a net zero energy project. So what that means is it will be all electric and we will be utilizing solar panels or photovoltaics, PVs, as they're often referred to, um, that will be on the roof but there'll also be canopies in the parking lot to support all of the energy that needs to be produced on site to support the functioning operation of the school. Um, we actually find this to be very beneficial. In the summer, it provides shade in the parking lot. In the winter, it um, you know helps with the snow and freezing rain. So we actually see the canopies in the parking lot as a wonderful um, added benefit to the to the site and to the project, uh, the entrance to the south, which is for bus drop off and van drop off. So I'll try to describe it. The existing the new school is directly south of the existing school. Um, it's quite far away um tim what's what's the distance about 120 feet from the existing building the closest point of the new building so the the new building is oriented in such a way that it will take advantage of um, north south solar orientation to allow as much natural daylight and views into the classrooms while managing the glare of the sunlight as as best as possible. So the new school will actually be pretty much perpendicular to the existing school. So when you enter um, from either the north or the south drive, you will be looking at the entry of the new school and then the building will really just, um, you'll, you'll walk through the building from set from west to east or from left or from right to left. So I don't know if that explains it, right? So the new building west will be to east, perpendicular, yep. west to yep. east, okay? So yep. when we when you pull in, um, with, we'll just stay with the bus drop off. The bus loop is quite large. It will accommodate all of the buses. It will um, drop off and we, the, building is designed so that we have the community wing in the front of the building. And that consists of the um, cafetoria. You're going to like our terminology here. It's a cafeteria with a stage. So we call it a cafetorium, as well as a gymnasium. 
And then upstairs, there's a library or media center as well. The main Sorry, can entry, I ask, that's on the yes. west end? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So, yep, so that's on the it's west, west end. works really well for me. Perfect. So, okay. Thank you, thank you all. Okay. all and right. please, okay. ask, ask for clarification because okay. uh, we're, I, we're so used to pointing. Myra, so um, so thank you. Yep. Okay. So so we so as you enter the the building will be, uh, you will see the building as you approach it from either driveway. The main administration will be at the very front of the new building. It will include your main office. It will include uh, special education IEP staff, which is the uh, team chair for the building. You'll have your nurse's office there as well, as well as a conference room and uh, oversight school, um, the principal's office. On As you enter the building to the, that, that will be to your right, but they will have full view of the accesses into the, into the site. So they'll be able to see the buses arriving and they'll also be able to see the parents and staff and visitors entering the site and approaching the school as well. So the buses will be dropping off um, to the south of the new school. They'll come in, it's a loop. They'll come in, they'll loop around and they'll be dropping off kind of at the end of the community wing where there'll be a dedicated, bright, well-lit entrance for students to arrive that we consider this as their second main front door, they'll be able to enter there or they can also walk to the front main door. So they'll have um, options of how they want to enter the building. Excuse the me, van, so the, yes. the second door is on the south side and the yes. front? So you're saying the front, I say the front is the west. The front is the west, Got yes. it. Okay. So, and, then, yep. and then the second entrance will be on the to south. the south. Yeah. Yep. And it's sort of midpoint. It it yep. it um is located between the community wing as well as the academic wing. So Excuse the me. building I, can be closed off. Are yes. you using a mouse to point out? I'm not. Things? Would you like me to? I actually was not because I'm trying to use my words, but if that would be um I'm happy to um, can you see it well, moving? If, if you, I, yeah, but it's moving too fast for me. If you move okay. it very slowly. I can see okay. some stuff, but not a lot. So, Thank but you, I, I like that you're using the west, east, south wording as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. So as, as the buses enter, they'll loop around and they will drop off pretty much um, in front of the gymnasium, which is to the south of the building. There's that a, pink thing. yep, yeah. the bright pink. Um, yeah. They will enter a another entry door, which will be locked after drop off hours, and mm -hmm. then they can um, all all line up and stage along the loop. The drive will be wide enough that we can actually have two lanes of traffic entering this loop, and so as they're loading, unloading, or just staged waiting to pick up students. If you travel a little bit further back to the entrance, which would be west, as you approach the main entry area or plaza, we have a pull-out area for all of the vans to park. So uh -huh. those vans are independent and separate from the bus drop-off, and it will give them all of the time required to load unload weight for students because we always understand how much additional time that may be required for those. So they, the vans have uh, sufficient parking. I think there are seven vans and they will be able to park oh. along the south of the, of the new building, but uh, very in close proximity to the main entrance and everything will be level. Everything will be accessible. There'll be no curbs. Every, everyone will be able to just enter um, into the building. There'll be no so, curves, but there will be truncated domes to indicate where the, right, where the road ends and where the sidewalk ends. So they'll, yeah, so so as they pull in, Tim, right, there's 
occur that the buses will the vans will be able to load and unload the passenger the students correct and wherever you are passing from the sidewalk to uh, driving there is a tactile surface to to mark that the trunk good okay. yeah the mouse so helps okay thank you thank you um so there's also as um where the Vans will be located, which will be to the west of the main entrance. There's a very large open plaza that will be fully accessible, of course, that would also enter the main building. And this main plaza joins with the um, drop-off area and parking from the north entrance. So the again, parents, visitors, and staff would enter from the north. They would then head south through the parking lot. And then as you start turning this loop, there'll be also a cutout area for parents that can't just live drop off their students, you know, just pull up, the student gets out and they go along their way. There are students that um, do require some additional time to, to uh, get regulated or be prepared to enter the school on a daily basis. So we have allowed for, I believe it's five cars that can not just live park, but they can pull over and, and walk their students into the school as they sometimes require some additional time for the transition from home to school. And then well, that'll as, be, that's great, but yeah. it's going to be really hard for them to police it. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I know. And, you know, we've had so many conversations with the principal, the assistant principal, um, the facilities folks that they have quite a few people out there as it is. And yeah. we're actually hoping that this design will help simplify it a little bit. Um, okay. We, we understand. I worked in the school for 20 years, so I know the deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, right. and, anyway. and I okay. was just going to say, and, and you can't control parents' bad behaviors, right? Nope. It's not the kids. It's, it's right. not anyone else. So, um, but, but, you know, we, the, the loop road, I should give them a, enough uh, distance where they can actually drop off. And so this road too, or this drive as well is wide enough that past cars can pull over for drop off and pick up. And there could be, there's a lane to the left of that where cars can pass those cars. So it's not like they're cars that are waiting to drop off or pick up their students are going to be blocking the entire circulation of that road. You have clear signage of all that too, right? There'll be, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll have some bollards in the front of the school to obviously for protection of the pedestrians and for the Good. school itself. We have bike racks. So we have two locations for bike racks. One bike rack is between the south and the north drives that is in this large plaza that is in front of the main entrance. And then to the north of the building is another set of bike racks that will be available for community use as people use the fields, which is where the existing building is. So once that building comes down, we're creating this uh, beautiful area for community fields, whether it's softball, soccer, ultimate Frisbee, um, you'll have many opportunities there. And then as well, another amenity or feature of the site directly to the north of the new building will be the very large playground and play area, which is hard and soft surfaces for mm -hmm. the students as well. And that area will be accessed if, if parents drop off in the morning and students wanna go play on the equipment while they're waiting to be um, allowed into the school, they could use this area as well as it is directly outside of the cafetorium so that it's uh, located strategically for easy access, quick access for recess before or after lunch. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing we wanna note about the playground is we've had 
so many conversations and it's it's not we're not complete yet but this will be a fully accessible playground so i think it's um is it in belchertown uh now i'm forgetting the name of it uh jessica's boundless Jessica's, playground. it is in belchertown jessica's boundless jessica's playground. boundless playground i don't know if you're all familiar with it but oh, um yeah. it, it is a wonderful playground that's fully accessible um, and that was built several years ago. And we think now that there's actually more opportunities to fully engage students with more than just a ramp system. There are amenities and spinners and things like that that all students can can use so that it, it just makes it a more interactive and fun environment for all the students. So we're in the process of getting into that. Um, we'll be finalizing all of the pieces and components uh, a little further in design. So okay. let me think, what else? Yes, go ahead. I have a oh, stupid no. question. Oh, go on. No, nothing stupid, but go ahead. Uh, in this picture, I see a lot of green dots that look like green peas. Are those trees? What are those? Uh, trees or, or bushes, yes. Oh, yes. okay. Okay, yes. <laughs> I just wasn't you. quite sure. <laughs> Yeah, and that is exactly what they look like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, it's our you. artistic, our artistic liberty of how we design or, yeah. or draw trees. So, thank you. It makes sense. Um, <laughs> as as you um, just to to finish the amenities on the site um, again with the school looking uh, with the school. If you go to the north of the school and come around the building, you'll see this playground which is across which is adjacent to the cafeteria as you move further east um, the, alongside the classroom wing or academic wing there is a round uh, round shaped uh, basketball courts there are um, two half size basketball courts that will be used for students during recess. We, mm. We've spent a lot of time about oversight of students and it was really important that we co-located uh, activities for students so that um, they that staff could see and observe students during recess. Mm -hmm. If you come further further south now, we're kind of circling the building, we're going from west to east, the uh, half-size basketball courts will be kind of at the end of the long part of the building or east, you then start heading south, which you will now arrive at the back of the building. And mm -hmm. there we'll have two full-size basketball courts as well. Um, those are mm -hmm. more for recreation for students during PE or gym, gym class. Um, we understand how every, everyone loves basketball. So that was a really large request and large ask from the gym teachers. So those would be uh, two full-size basketball courts that will be um, located behind the school. Um, as you then come around the building, you head south and now we're going to head back west. What we've developed is uh, some outdoor learning areas. We have a pollinator garden and we will be talking a little bit more about that. Uh, no, did I say that right? Yes, a pollinator garden um, that will have uh, areas for uh, raised beds that, that will be able, um, that the students will be able to use. It will be enough for, uh, I think it's two full-size classrooms. And then we also have what's called an outdoor classroom. So that will have a structure that will be similar to like an open aired um, roof type structure that uh, canopy like, um, but it will be fully constructed that we have some photos uh, later in the presentation, but that will be able to house a full classroom that can sit under this roof uh, for outdoor instruction. And then as you turn 
as you continue to head back west, you come past the bus drop off area, past the gymnasium, and then you're back at the front of the school. How many classrooms are in the academic part on each floor? I mean, there'll be so, some on the south side of the building and some on the north side of the building? Correct, correct. It's, it's what we would say is a kind of double loaded corridor, right? You have classrooms yep. on one side, classrooms on the other, and we'll have north facing and south facing. So the north there, facing yeah. ones won't get any sun. Yeah. Uh, no, no direct sun. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so, you know, th those are wonderful. We have, and, and the cafeteria cafetorium will be fully glassed with great views, but that too, it's, it's yep. great that it will not have um, any sun. It's the classrooms um, facing the South that, that will have all, that will um, have the shade, have the sun and we'll, we yep. have uh, ways of mitigating that. There are five, classrooms per grade, Myra, um, yep. and we have integrated the <laughs> special education for um, within those. So we have clusters of three classrooms per cluster of classrooms. And then the three classrooms, there's three classrooms, say, to the north, three classrooms to the south, and they'll be connected by these, uh, by a corridor. So there'll be a, a pod of six classrooms, two, two pods per, mm. two pods or two grades per floor. So um, it will be kindergarten, first grade on the first floor, second grade, third grade, second floor, fourth, fifth grade on the fifth floor, on the third floor. So it sounds like there'll be six classrooms in each pod. Okay, and, and, and one pod on each side of the hall. Two two pods on each side of the hall. So right. So there'll um, be twelve classrooms yeah. on each floor. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So just some other um, attributes to the site and the exterior of the building. This image here that we're showing is actually looking kind of back at the school as you are. Uh, parent dropping off their student. So you have come through the parking lot and you have turned now back north as you're dropping off your student and heading out. But as you're looking at the school, it is a three-story school. And so there are certain elements that only required it to be one or one and a half or two stories. And so it was really important that we broke down the scale and feel of um, it's 105,000 square feet overall, right? So how, how to break down the scale and feel of a pretty large building. So there will be prominent features such uh, as the name of the school. We haven't figured out exactly where that's going to go. But as you arrive, the main entry will be um, highlighted with awnings, colorful images or colorful yeah. paintings. Uh, that will highlight the entry of the school. And we've also used multiple different roof lines and some slope roofs. And again, to give it some interesting shape and um, break down the scale, but it also brings in a lot of natural light. So we're using that as clear stories is what we call it. So really high glass on walls, on the interior walls that will also bring in natural light into oh, yeah. say the corridors or the main or the main entryway. So we have some slope roofs, some flat roofs, um, and yep. diff differing roof lines to really make this an interesting looking building and also breaking down the scale. So above the office, gym cafeteria is the library. And is there something on the third floor? So in the front of the building, it is, um, here, why don't I, I can, let me just quickly go there for you. So the first floor, right, you enter through the main doors, which will be from the west, you'll be traveling east. Um, we have the main office with the team chair, special education yep, team yep, chair, yep. principal conference. Nurse, can you see it moving? 
It's over yeah. here in the very end of the building. Which which do you direction? See it? So uh, I'm heading. Do you okay, see, it's see very the green? Fast. Yeah, do you, you see move, the green? I do. So if you move it more slowly, better? I can yeah, it's white Is against that the color yes. contrast. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, could I can I I wonder if I can change that for you. It's a hand, if you can see it's that. It's a hand. Yeah. Hand. Okay. So as you enter the main uh, double doors, it, it will be a double vest, mm -hmm. will be a vestibule that is locked. You have to be buzzed in. There'll actually be a window in the vestibule. There'll be another set of doors that are locked. So as a visitor arrives, they have to actually be buzzed in a Good. second time. So they get buzzed in. They're met by main, uh, main administration or main office secretarial staff. They'll say, okay, what are you here for? Show me your ID. Well, we, you, depending on um, what type of visitor management system you have. And once that person's been authorized to actually enter the building, the second set of doors will be unlocked and a visitor can enter into the building. Um, across the hall to the north of the main entry or main office <laughs> is the music suite. We have a very large, very well-lit music classroom, which will be at the other corner of the entry of the building. And then as you walk down the corridor, you'll oh. arrive at, do you see my mouse, Elise? Um, is it possible to make it black? Maybe, if I know how to do that. Okay, because it's white uh, and you have a lot of light areas. Yes, Otherwise, I'll. See if you if can't, I, I'll, if you can't, I'll wanna. just No, no, let me see if I can. Hey, Tim, do you have any idea how to do that? I do Tim, not know how to do that, sorry. All right, then I'll just <laughs> listen. Let me see if I can do that. I should have thought about that um, ahead of time, Elise. I apologize. Okay. So as, as you walk, you have the gymnasium, which will be as you're walking through the building now, right, you're heading east, but as you're walking mm -hmm. through the building, your gymnasium yep. will be on your right and the cafeteria or cafetorium will be on your left. The cafetorium will be very bright. We'll have a lot of um, natural glass so that you can look into the cafeteria and actually see the site beyond the cafeteria, mm -hmm. the playgrounds and the field as well. Uh, we also have a platform in the cafeteria, so that's why it's called the cafetorium. It's a stage yep. with the three three risers that step up to it. So once you enter the cafeteria or cafetorium, you would take a left. You would enter uh, or go up this ramp system. It's a ramp that would take you up to the platform, and we have three large practice rooms for additional music instruction and all of their instruments that will be stored there. You just mean, Donna, I found out how to change the mouse. If that's oh, helpful. thank you. You're awesome. Yes, it is. What do I do? So you need to go to your start button on your computer and go to um, Bluetooth and other devices. Oh, okay. So let me do that. I have to go to my... Do I go to system settings? Maybe we're a Mac, but that's okay. Let me try that. Go to system settings, go to Bluetooth and other settings. Yes. Yeah. Well, mine's uh, under Bluetooth and other devices. Yeah, let me go to let me go to accessibility vision voice over zoom hearing pointer control. Let me try that. Uh, speed, are they going to allow me to do a color? Mouse options. Let's, we're on Max, and I don't see that it's allowing me to do, change my color. On Mac, it says click the yeah. Apple icon in the top left corner of the screen and select system settings. Click accessibility yeah. in the sidebar. Yeah. Select display from the list of accessibility options. And then yep. click the color swatch for pointer outline color and choose a new color. Oh, awesome. So the fill of it would be better, right? Would you like it black? And maybe Let's just a little bit outline. bigger. If you yeah, could, if that would be wonderful. Let's see, so, 
Oh, yeah. but you know what? That's funny. That's the pointer, but it won't, when I have my mouse, you know where it is? I think it's in my, because I'm an acrobat, which gives me that hand. Oh, you know what? Maybe I can change the hand. How's this? Can you see this now, Elise? Where is it? Uh, look, so it's to... up, it's okay, up, it it's, it's, do you see me moving? It's north oh, of the yeah. purple. Okay, it's very tiny. Yeah, I got it. Let me see if I can make it bigger. I don't know if I point or size. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, here you go. How's this? How's this? Perfect. Oh, oh my God, that's fantastic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank so you much. Jennifer. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Jennifer. Oh, yeah. Thank Sometimes. you. Okay. Is that much better for you? Thank Excellent. you for pointing that out. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So we were saying as as you walk down um, the community wing or the main lobby, the cafeteria will be to your left. As you enter the cafeteria, you uh, would go up a ramp. It's it's a very slight ramp. It's only three steps up to the platform. There you could enter the stage or the platform as well as three practice or supplemental music spaces. And along with that also includes um, uh, storage for all of the instruments. So if you um, then come back down into the cafeteria, we have the kitchen, which is just to the right of, uh, or as part of, but on the right side of the cafeteria with serving lines that would take the students through the cafeteria. And we can show you um, or, or talk through a little bit more of the, we, we have all of the Tables have accessible seating at them, et cetera. So just continue to take you through the school itself. We do have um, at this nodes, we have the community wing that is to the west, the academic wing, which is for those that can see are in purple. There's this node in the middle where that vestibule is or the arrival is for students on the buses. And then we have an elevator that is centrally located that will take you to uh, the second and third floors. So it's centrally located for students and anyone requiring to use an elevator. There's also a second door directly um, at this node. So if you enter in from the south where you get dropped off at the buses, directly across is also another exit out into the play field. So it's great for circulation throughout the building. As you walk down now, we're entering into the academic or classroom wing. And um, Mara, thank you for pointing out, we have uh, six classrooms on say the north side and six classrooms on the south side. There are what we call project areas that are um, clustering the three classrooms. There'll be three classrooms per cluster. Outside of that will be this project area that will be for um, small group instruction. It could be for individuals, for the younger kids. There would always, of course, be a staff person with them. It could be for uh, quick pull-out instruction, not necessarily special ed, but for anyone requiring some additional support. We also have located lockers. So everyone will have a locker in, in this new school and those will be located mm -hmm. in this project area. Um, you, we have a rendering to share with you, but the lockers are going to be short and fat so that kids can actually get their belongings in them. And so 50% of them will be fully accessible. So little kids, don't get how to use a lock. No locks, no locks. No, oh, so they're lockers without locks. They're, they're lock, yeah, they're lockless. Okay. They're not lockers. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Because I'm thinking, oh, there's your first problem. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there'll be no lockers. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, they're, okay. they're lock, lockless lockers. Lockless lockers, um, okay. Right, right, me. thank you. Um, and, then, and then within the academic wing, we have they, uh, the new elementary school is going to house the uh, special education programs that are currently both at Wildwood and at Fort River. So we'll have the ILC uh, program, the building blocks program, and also the AIMS program. And so we have So strategically... just in case people don't know, the building blocks is usually people who have some kind of behavioral 
issues that make it very difficult for them to be in a big group. The uh, AIMS is for kids on the autism spectrum and the ILC, I'm not sure what that is. The ILC is um, for developmentally uh, okay. delayed or challenged. It, it really, they, they, it's the intense learning center. So it okay. really could be anyone with autism, developmental issues or delays. Okay. So, but the aims, at least at the high school, you have to you have to be on the spectrum to utilize that program. Correct, and same oh. and same with yeah. the aims program here. Okay. Okay. Um, and but but it it was important to integrate them as best yep. as we can. The the other thing that I haven't even mentioned, uh, I don't know. If so are they going to be in with... two of the six classrooms on each yes. side, or the? Okay. So so the yes. five are for Gen classroom. Yes. And then one on each side has a, a separate purpose. Correct. Okay. Correct. Got and, it. Um, you know, everyone has worked so hard in Amherst to have this dual language comenantes. And so that will still occur here. In fact, we've, we've organized it in such a way that, um, and arranged the classrooms in such a way that, that it'll, it'll make it just so much easier for this full immersion for the comenantes program. Uh, we also have other support spaces, a learning center, which is a special education, small group instructional area. We have small group spaces that can be used for anyone, whether it's for testing or literacy or math specialists or anyone that needs those. Those are non-designated. We have a speech language pathologist as well uh, located in, in the um academic wing. We also have the English language learner program or the ELL or ESL as people are familiar with it. So some of the and kids that, will have to go to a different floor for anything that they need because you we don't have enough staff to have everybody on all the floors. I don't think. Um, well, you, have, you have quite a bit of staff, but yes, there are, there are a couple <laughs> of programs. So the ILC, okay. there's one per floor, right? So the ILC or the intensive learning program you have three of those classrooms. So there'll be one per floor. The building blocks, you have two classrooms. So we have located one on the okay. first floor, one on the third floor. And okay. then the AIMS program, there's only one. So we put it centrally located. So it's on the second floor. So that has easy access okay. Okay. from the first and the third. Uh, we also have as part of this, um, we have multi-fixture bathrooms. Um, in the academic wing, as well as a gender neutral bathroom for students. And then of course we have uh, independent stall bathrooms for staff. The kindergarten classrooms will all have their own bathroom inside their classroom and the ILC space will also, the um, intensive learning program will also have a toilet in that suite in their classroom as well. Um, we so those have kids yeah often cannot toilet themselves so I assume you have provisions for that we do thank you okay. we we okay. these um in the nurse and then in um at the ILC class uh toilet rooms that are attached to that uh, space actually they'll be oversized so that they can accommodate uh changing tables like full-size not kid not you know, yeah. not the ones not that you see at Kohl's, but, but full yeah. size that will be adjustable so they can accommodate larger students. Also provisions for um, what we call Hoya lifts or mobility lifts that can um, help with the students getting out of a wheelchair and going onto the toilet as well. I was going to ask about that. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Pamela. Hi. Um, so thanks for letting me... Uh, uh, interject. I am interjecting on behalf of one of the DAC members who could yep. not be uh, here today, uh, Marty Smith. Um, and she wrote with a couple of concerns about the restroom. So this is the time for me to yeah, perfect in, to interject. So she wrote in her email that she sees that there is a lack of space for trash cans. Um. Um. Uh, to be placed on the floor and that the location of the ha hand dryers are are placed in such a way where if a person was using a wheelchair 
they would not be able to get to the hand, to the hand dryer without touching the wheels of their wheelchair with wet hands. So I guess the question is, how would a wheelchair user get to the hand dryers without touching their wheels? And where is the placement of the uh, of the hand dryers in the path of tr travel? And um, so I, I'm hoping I'm doing justice to her questions. And um, if she said that she would be more than willing to um, to ask them directly if that if you know if I'm not doing the, a great job of describing them. You, know, you made perfect sense, and and we we talk through this all the time. Um, Tim, I I don't know if the final placement of the hand dryers has been identified yet. Uh, honestly, it has not. Um... I mean, that's a very astute observation and, and she may be a step ahead of us. We have it included for scope. And before we finalize the details of everything, we will, you know, make these considerations, but we're always happy to have these conversations with stakeholders about where the best place is to put everything. But uh, we are certainly aware of the concerns. So one thing we often talk about that has to do with bathrooms um, might be the things that she brought up. Obviously, the height of those is, you know, little kids, big kids, adults, whatever. Um, but um, paper towel dispensers, if you're going to have any of them, um, blind people can never find them. They always seem to be the last thing. And somebody says, oh, yeah, we'll slap it over here. And we can't ever find them. Um, so there has to be some logic I can't mean, I don't mean we can't ever, but they're often difficult enough to find that you end up not even attempting to dry your hands. Um, soap as well. And exactly. So find soap as well. It's very yeah. difficult to find. So if you figure out a way to do it, if it could be in a standard position in all your bathrooms, then people who can't see them very well will know where to find them. Um, trash cans also are, ah, throw it under the sink, ah, throw it by the door, ah, do this. Um, silly things like that, that you never think about, are are um, problematic for people who just can't see where the trash can is. Um, so, um, you know, you have to think about where you're putting all those things before you do the design so that it doesn't end up just getting stuck up on the wall where there's an empty space. If that makes any sense, because that that's what happens. Sense. That's what happens most of the time. Yeah. Also, so we will. Yep. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Um. And I'm going to request a lot of bathroom get designed where the trash can is near the door, which can often open really quickly and smack somebody in the head when they're trying to throw something away. Correct. So please don't put it there. <laughs> Thank or you. Or if so you're going to put it there, put it in a way. I mean, there are people who think the trash can should be right by the door. So then you can hold on to your paper towel, open the door and then throw it away. So but you have to think about um, things like that um, just so that it ends up it ends up working. And I'll tell you a story which um, highlights this once went to a hotel that had candles, electric candles on the wall of the bathroom. It was an old fashioned hotel and they had electric candles and I was feeling around for the paper towels cause I couldn't find them. And I ended up sticking my hand on a hot wire um, which was my wet hand on a hot wire. Oh and my God. I mean, that doesn't happen very often but um, it's just, it's something that nobody ever thought about. Um, and so it's, it is something to think about. Traffic Thank flow you. in bathrooms, location of things people need in bathrooms. Um, there are always blind people who, you know, there's on every blind person website, and you're not going to have too many blind people here, so it's not a big thing, but we there are always, like, jokes about, yeah, like, how are you going to find, you know, everybody everybody who can't see has problems with this. Um, that that so, makes um, perfect sense, and... We appreciate your comments. Um, 
two things. One, one is obviously with the individual stall bathrooms, there are doors. For the multi-fixture bathrooms, which really are for students and for uh, we have a set of multi-fixture bathrooms by the in the community wing by the bath by the cafeteria and the gym, which would be for community use. Those are what we call airport style. There are no doors on them, right? So you enter, uh, you enter, and then say to your left or your right will be a set of sinks, and then you you go um, beyond that, and the, yep. the stalls will actually be there, but. You know, yep. we, we struggle as well um, as far as placement of paper towel dispensers because typically the school themselves will install them afterwards because they get them for free, right, from the uh -huh. paper towel manufacturers. So, so, but, the, but we, and we always try to make sure that we put blocking and make sure people are aware of where you're going to put these because they can't uh -huh. just adhere them to nowhere. So, um, th these are really helpful and thoughtful comments that we'll have to um, just reiterate and, and try to label them carefully. And we're happy, um, Pamela, I don't, I don't recall the name of the woman that sent in the comments, but Marty, Marty, thank you. We can, you know, we're, we're not, we haven't fully designed it yet, but we're happy to share with you all what, what your comments are as we lay out these spaces. Marty that is an, an architect. You need to know that. Huh. Marty is That's an architect. She worked at UMass for many years. She's done a lot of these things. Um, when she brings up something, she's, I've never known her to be wrong. That's so. perfect. So, okay. so we would love, we would love it. It, um, it would make us feel great to, to have okay. uh, her input and review. Yep. So we'll make sure that I guess, Pamela, you'll, you'll be our contact, but at the appropriate time before we finalize the layout of the bathrooms with those details, we'll make sure that Marty takes a look at them. So thank cool. you. Thank One you. Thank question. you. Sure. If, if I could add a comment at, at this time, okay. because this has been a, a great conversation about restroom access, but the other part of it is, is that, and, and this isn't part of the architect's job, mm -hmm. it's this programmatic access that goes, that once the school actually opens, um, aides or teachers are going to have to work with individual students to make sure that they get the layout because whatever you do, however uh, carefully you plan, there's going to be a kid who doesn't quite fit what you've got. And so, and that's going to change from year to year as well. And so the teachers and the aides and however the school is structured, they're going to have to be a vital part of how the architecture works you know, in reality, in real time. That's all I have to say. No, thank yeah. you. And actually, James, you know, um, at further in this discussion, we, you know, want to just share with you some ideas and thoughts of wayfinding and how are you going to navigate? And mm. How do you know where the kindergarten classrooms are and where do you go? Is there a to way get we can stairs? get to that? Because we're yes, actually at to. the end of our time, sure. but we're not at the end of what we want to hear. So to um, I think team things team that team. I would want to know are about wayfinding, about color. Just so yes, I don't yes. know. I don't know. I think Elise and I, I used to be a low vision person. Um, color yeah, is very important. That. Color contrast and color so that if everything in the school is either white or gray or teal, that's not helpful because when I was a kid, the way I would know, I couldn't ever see a room number, but what I was able to see was the color of the floor or the wall in the classroom I was passing by. So I knew that if I was looking, I quickly memorized the order of the floors and the colors and I'd know, okay, that's the right room, it's the gray floor. That's the right room, it's the brown floor. Um, and so, Things like that, um, which um, are, I don't know how Elise ever did it, but that um, the colors in the classrooms on the floors, the colors maybe on the door frame. Don't assume people can read the the signage and the even if it's braille. You know, sometimes it's easier for you to say, "Okay, it's the blue one. I got it." Yep. Yep. And, yeah. and thank you. Go ahead, Elise. Yeah. Sure. 
Um, I was going to also add, I mean, the wall color does, that's how I did it in my high school, but it had, my high school had, you know, different colored walls for different colored classrooms. It's not always the case, but often if the door is a different, oh, history, the red door or math, the yellow door, um, exactly. that kind of thing. And even if it's not just a room number, but a shape, you know, a color triangle or a color... Yeah, color coding really, really works, and color contrast. So thank you, and we're 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 in the process of selecting our colors. So might even be a great opportunity yeah. to get your input. And and sounds like Marty, being an architect, might might also um, have have some great ideas if if you know she has spent a lot of time with this. But we agree. And there is a balance. So a lot of times what we do is each floor will have a different distinct color. Within each floor, each pod or grade would have its own color. So similar Good. to what you were saying, right? So when you walk in, you want to know I'm going to the blue. Well, the blue, mm -hmm. you know, the blue is kindergarten. And, and, you know, we'll have to think about what a contrasting color is if, if you can't, you know, pick up distinct colors or similar colors, but go to the, so the wainscot a lot of times in the court, in the hallways, right? That usually we have tile that comes up to like backpack height. So yeah. those would be colorful. We would tie those in. Um, what I'm showing here, Myra, is what, uh, a view might be from the academic corridor. So this is walking from, say, the the main administration space. You've walked through the community wing, and now yep. we're walking into the classroom wing. And yep. as you walk in, we have beautiful, clear glass at the end of every hallway. So it brings a natural light in, but it also gives you that connection to the outdoors. And then on both sides of the hallway or the corridor are these are, are the clusters of classrooms, which are set back a little bit on the left and right of the corridors. And, and inside that project area, which is about 600 square feet, it's quite large, are where the lockers are, as well as a couple of tables for Where's instructional use. So can you see it now? Now it's doing Where is it? it. Let me let me get my let's try this again. There it is. Do you see it? Yeah, now the whole can, screen. Tur there it is. Thank it just you. turned right. Yep. So so as okay, you right, this is the project area, Elise. Um, you okay. can. I don't know if gotcha. you can make out. We have the blue. So. Here we were saying yes. we would have blue door frames with blue lockers that would be prominent. Um, we've talked mm -hmm. about that hanging light fixtures or the pendants hanging down from. So you'll have visual access on the walls, on the ceiling, on the floors. Uh, we well, also here's wanted, my question. Uh, okay. Yes. So yes. each one of those where the lockers are small group instruction, those are like a lobby to the three classrooms. Yes, exactly. We call it? yes, yes. We call okay. it a front porch. Yes, front we call porch. It like okay, a front got porch. it. So yes, for me, each front porch, like you would know that this front porch is purple. That front porch is blue. If all the front porches are blue, that doesn't help. Correct. No, you have to have different colors. So on right. each floor, you need to have different front porches. And Multiple you might, color. it might be that the most westmost one on each floor is one color and the wet, the middle one on the floor is another color and the, and the eastmost one is another color. So you would know without thinking about how many steps you walked, you'd say, oh, that's a red one. And I know that's, oh, the, that's a know. good idea. You know what, so, you know, Myra, I don't know if we've ever thought it normally we do. Blue is one floor, green, I'm making it up. Green is another, yellow is yeah, the other. Yeah, yeah. But, but why not keep it consistent on every floor, right? Well, you and can, maybe, yeah. maybe change one one part of it. Maybe the floor color is a different yes. color so exactly. that you know where you are. You but got you it. Know, that, you got that's it. That's great. That's great. You mm -hmm. got it. So you know so. You're, on the, you're on the green floor, you're on, you're floor. on the red floor, yeah. but you're not going to do red at fades. But you, the green floor... And you got the purple floor and, and, but coming? you're in the, you're in, you okay. see the yellow 
front porch, and that one means you're in the middle. Yep, that's great. Hi. Um, yeah. Sorry. Um, I guess I'm actually about to make a similar point with how um, in this um, in this uh, image rendering, the lights, the rectangular lighting panels, are uh, look to be colored, where that could be floor specific coloring. Um, another place to put that. Um, but also, I want to like emphasize that um, for at least the primary colors for each floor, it might be good to make sure that's colorblind accessible. Um, it's yeah. what? I'm sorry, yeah. Asa. It's colorblind. What? So you're colorblind. not going to put them thank red you. and green. I didn't hear that. Yep. Thank you're not you. going to make them red and green. Right. Yes, cause, um, uh, because it's, just beyond visual accessibility, this is going to be an area with a lot of young kids who probably will have an easier time distinguishing between colored areas rather than necessarily the room numbers. So Correct. it's good for general accessibility too. That, that's that's a really good point. And yes, and um, for those of you that you can see the rendering, we have uh, pen, very large pendant hanging lights above the project areas that are either circles or hollow squares or rectangles, right? Just just to create some interesting patterns. Uh, it's light, but then we also paint the frames. So there would be corresponding colors to the lockers, to the light fixtures, and ideally to the floors. And, and we do, we haven't gotten there yet, but we want to, we're starting to think about patterns for the floors, right? In the classrooms, yep. as well as in the corridors. Mm -hmm. So all, all of this is really, really helpful. That's okay. great. The light fixtures, if you say you're going to paint them to match the room, is that going to darken the light quality? Yeah. So let me say it differently. They're like metal and so they're just painted so it's so in let's see how can i say this it they're is opaque. a they're opaque they're, so it doesn't matter what color they are is it's a very yeah it, it's, well, it's like a large metal squ hollow square right mm -hmm. it's it's um a large opening that it's really just the frame and then the light is in the frame so it's open oh but it represents a shape, whether it's a circle or a square. And then the metal that's um, above the light, it's, and it, it's all open. It's just the frame oh, that would be okay. surrounding the color. Yeah, sorry, oh, okay. I did not do a good job explaining gotcha. that. Yeah. All right, so it's not the whole light bulb. It thing. is not, right, okay. right. These are accent lights Great. that do, do, do provide light. We also, as far mm -hmm. as light is concerned, in these project areas or front porches, Myra, I love what you said. Um, we we have um, glass high above the locker areas so that we are getting actually daylight from the classrooms into the project areas and, and further into the corridors. So um, this natural light's really important both for views and connections to outdoors. Um, Fantastic. I, Oh, yeah, and good. and for for those again, um, the project areas. What we're showing again, all of this natural light mm -hmm. that will come in from the classrooms. Uh, we have very large side lights in the classrooms that will be glass that you can have this visual connection inside the classrooms. There will be what we typically do is um, a focus wall, or or you know one wall will be painted, and we try to tie that also to connect to the project areas and the color for that grouping of classrooms as well. Um, other aspects of the project areas would be like a whiteboard style. You can use it for project-based learning, but also for instructional use will be a marker board that is magnetic. And then uh, we have storage above the lockers because we know we can never provide enough storage for teachers. And we have also um, created what is like a half wall between the project area and the corridor. And it's a half wall. So um, those that are, I'm, I'm very short, but um, you should be able to see over it, but it just creates enough of a barrier so that you do not feel you're in the 
fray of all the students going back and forth to classrooms. So it breaks down so the it's scale. Be very open. It's it's very open and huh. it but but yet there's a, a little bit of a barrier between you the pro I mean the project area and the corridor so that um, I'm concerned it, it, about sound with that much yes. open. There might be really? a lot of people, kids who have um, what uh, auditory processing issues. There's a lot of them. Um, yep. They have auditory processing issues. They pull in sound from everywhere and they can't concentrate. I would be one of those people. Um, I'm one of them also. Yes. And so when you have everything open like that, you are causing a lot of sound confusion. Um, and I, I think that's something you really need to think about because all the openness is great, except there's a big downside to it when you want kids to be able to focus on one thing, um, which is whatever is going on in the group they're in, and if they can, you know, they'll be able to see people in the hallway running by and they'll be able to hear stuff going on. And um, it's it's a lot of um, what's sensory yeah. uh, overload. Yeah. Yeah. We, and, we um, yeah. So so we have uh, created what you would say kind of visual barriers to the corridors. Right. right. So and in, intentionally um, working with uh the special education director uh previous superintendent mike morris um and and the principals they they felt that was a great way to create a barrier a visual barrier and somewhat of a sound barrier from the project areas to the main corridor it also would allow for opportunities to display student work um, but they also wanted to also create maybe a little bit of a, what you call like a nook um, for students to be able to sit and read or have independent study by themselves. So we have this long wall that separates the project area from the main corridor. And then at the end of the long wall are two smaller kind of square shaped open um, areas for kids to sit in, right? So it it's a, a square shape, the kids can sit in, if we have pillows in there, whatever, they can sit and read, but it, it creates a barrier, but it also gives kids flexibility of where they sit and learn in these project areas. I hear what but you're saying, you and with all due door. respect, I really am very concerned about sound yeah. confusion. And I understand- Yep. I worked in a school. I understand the security issues. I understand how you don't want to have doors exactly, but at the same time, you do need them. Um, yeah. And I, um, but the sound infiltration from corridors, especially because there aren't going to be carpets on the floor, they're not hygienic, right? Correct. So Correct. Um, I think this is a serious problem. Um, I and I think it is from a perspective of a person who is, has auditory processing issues and um, they're not all visually impaired. There are just plenty of people with auditory processing issues. Yep. And I'm really surprised nobody came up with that as a problem because I think it's serious. I would go yeah, nuts in a school where I could hear everything. I actually so, switched schools because of that. When I was in well, high school, I changed schools. Because of the sound. Yeah, because I couldn't concentrate. Yeah, the noise. So, yeah. Tim, I don't know if you want to jump in. I, you know, obviously we have the acoustic treated yeah. ceilings. Um, this is a similar uh, yeah. so design we, we do, feature. Yeah, go ahead, Tim. No, I was going to say we do have the acoustic treated ceilings and other areas on the walls. I will say that we have, this has been brought up as a concern. We toured other schools that we have done that feature similar designs in terms of project areas with Mike Morris. Um, and of all the features that he commented on the most was actually how quiet the schools were compared to, uh, and, and I'm not saying this is perfect. I mean, your concerns are certainly there. The, there are, this is a hard floor there. The walls are not there, but the noise control um, 
is built into the space to the extent possible. Um, and, you know, maybe not when every class is transferring, but with, you know, a student using the project area and a student using a project area that's down the hall in another pod, uh, I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying there's no noise leaking, but um, at least in the mind of Mike, when we were touring through other schools, it was a manageable situation. That's not to say that we can't continue to look at it and don't understand your concerns, but uh, to the extent that we can control noise with architectural elements and finishes that is incorporated in design. What about from the classrooms into the front porch? Are there doors? Absolutely. Okay. So there won't be leakage from the classrooms. It'll only be whatever people are doing in those project areas, plus who's ever walking by in the hallway. Correct. And um, I worked at the high school, and I can tell you that it's true we didn't have little front porches, but we had kids out in the hallway doing stuff together in groups all the time. There were always groups of kids sitting on the floor in the hallway working together on a project because there wasn't a place. But each each classroom would have had several groups and some of them were in the classroom mm -hmm. and some of them were, um, but there's, when you're working on small stuff and it's not a little kid thing, but it's a certainly fourth and fifth grade thing. Um, you need You need places where kids can go and not hear other people's project groups. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just telling you from experience that there, there's a lot of stuff that goes on that's really healthy and good, um, and, but kids make noise. Understood. They talk, they talk uh, over each other and they I, make noise. I, I, I do want to add that as part of the program, in addition to the front porches, the project areas outside each cluster of three classrooms, there are small group rooms, which are specifically designed for pull out learning for the group that you're talking about that would want to be pulled out of the classroom. And that has a door that can be totally acoustically isolated from the corridor, the project areas. Okay. Um, those, I mean, there's only one per floor, two per floor, uh, oh, two, okay. two per floor. So that may not be enough for every nope. possible pull out situation, but it is there to an extent. And in, with you know the people who need it the most using the small group rooms and the rest in the project areas uh we feel that we're we're going a long way to satisfy those needs okay i don't think it's going to work for me i mean i can really <laughs> i can really say and who is it who said they had to switch schools elise elise yeah it was okay. me i i just couldn't concentrate it was terrible yeah, I think I think, you know, especially as you get older and like you said, Myra, with uh, the collaboration with high schoolers, yeah. the use is is um, much different than what it would be here. But that's not to say kindergartners or, or uh, elementary school kids are quiet, to say the least. Right. No, so, they're, they're definitely not. They're, they're but not. kids in fourth and fifth grade do certainly fifth graders and fourth graders do collaborate on projects. Yeah. Maybe yeah. little kids don't without supervision, but bigger kids, um, you know, 10 and 11 year olds can. Yeah, it's and, wonderful. Um, and so anyway, I, I, I am registering my serious concern as a person with sound issues. Yep, thank you. And, and, you know, we have a uh, an acoustician that works with us and, and maybe we could bounce some ideas off of him, how we maybe be able to reduce some of the noise or control the sound a little bit better in those areas as well. Maybe carpeting a little bit, you know? Mm. Carpeting is a- uh, People don't do that. Big, yeah, well, you know, especially after COVID, like we're, we're yeah, carp, 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 unfortunately, as much as we agree, um, carpeting, it's, uh, frowned upon, but um, hmm. the, the the only thing I'll do is so, so your your comments are well noted, Myra, and thank you, Annalise. Um, we we will look at that harder. We're we're not done with design. Uh, we have an opportunity to improve it. Um, but I, I'm we're also just wanting to point out, uh, Tim, if you don't mind muting, sorry, I can hear myself from you. <laughs> no, can I just ask a security question? Um, yes, I mean. You know, we have to think about that for sure. I'm sure you've thought of about course. it a lot. Um, is there a place that's easily accessible 
um, for people to move kids who cannot move fast into that are secure? Are there enough places like that? You have those two little group rooms on a floor, um, but I'm just wondering what else you have, especially around the room where there are, you know, where the ILC uh, is, where there are a lot of kids who can't take care of their own needs and can't move fast. Um, are there ways to protect those kids with um, with uh, spaces that are going to be isolatable easily? When you say isolatable, they can't run. Oh, are, are you they saying can't from, run? From those kids can't run. You're saying from a shelter shelter. You have yes. a lot of windows. Yeah, yeah. We we There's do. A lot of um, glass. Yes, yes. We we have actually not as it. We've appropriately placed the glass where where there was most benefit. There's about 22% glass as as relates to the entire envelope. But that said, there is a lot of glass. Um, yeah. So what, what I assume we, it's not bulletproof glass because you can't afford that, right? Well, there's a whole lot of other reasons why bulletproof glass isn't always ideal. And, <laughs> and so when people say bulletproof, right, there there are different ways. But no, no. Mm -hmm. I, but I am concerned about. I am concerned yeah, about shelter how in easy, place. Whoops. Well, shelter in place, you have to be able to be unseen. I yes. mean, um, you know, and shelter in place, you know, only a certain number of kids can fit in the little bathroom. And an only, you know what I mean? There, yeah, um, I do. And especially for kids who, who cannot run fast. Like you can say, everybody go there, you know, quick, get under the table, quick, do this. There, I mean, there's staff, but there's not one-on-one -on -one for a lot of these kids. And where, yeah. where, you know, how is is there extra space where they can be sheltered? So within um, the actual program programs, the ILC, the AIMS, the building blocks, there are reflection spaces uh, that are are. Um, available, hundred percent. Not, not you're you're going to have a, a few kids that could probably fit in these spaces. It wouldn't be for the uh, entire student yeah. population in those classrooms, but those are available. Um, we have the mass special. We have these small group rooms. We have one, two, three, four, five, uh, five, six. You know, small group instruction areas directly off the quarters, not in these project areas or porches to the classrooms that are also accessible. So if a student is is traversing down the corridor and and um, there's an emergency, there's plenty of places they can uh, seek refuge. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure you've thought about it. My other question, just in the interest of time, uh, has to do with lavatories for community, um, which I assume are in the gym uh, cafeteria part of the building. Yes, right. Those those are the same. Those those are uh, similarly designed as to what we were talking about for the student multi fixture. These would uh -huh. also be designed in the same way. So um, we we have a set of those that are located in the uh, cap right by the cafeteria and gymnasium. So okay, so you have some of them are um, are uh, eat, oh, how do you call it? gender specific. And what you have gender neutral. Not, yep. Okay. Yep. So so we so have the multi fixtures. Gender, they're all gender neutral? The multi fixtures are not. Uh, Mass Plumbing okay. Co. will not allow us. They they still think that okay. you need something for the boys and you need something for the girls. But with that, there are gender a individual stall gender neutral with um associated with every one of the uh, multi fixture bathrooms. Okay, here's my question. Also, in the community bathrooms where they have multi stalls, is one of them an access, a large access stall? Yeah. Or uh, have a handicap accessible? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Is, is there yes. one handicap accessible stall in the community? Always. There yes. is. Okay. Yes. So you don't Always. have to go to a specific. Okay. No, every, every single multi fixture is, is fully okay. accessible. Great. Yeah. yeah. And I know we're running out of time. The only other couple of things that we maybe just want to point out, we have assisted listening devices in every classroom. We, we feel Great. it's just a wonderful for, okay. for, for the teacher as much as it is for the students. Um, 
trying to think. Other special education spaces include these reflection spaces for students that just just need a little time uh, to self-regulate uh, OT, occupational and physical therapy, speech and language. We actually have a dedicated space for assistive listening um, and also these small group spaces that Tim had mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to Does think. Does anybody have any other questions? Saren, you've been very quiet. Jim, you've been very quiet. Elise and I have monopolized everything. Is there anything that you are concerned about? Well, and can I just interrupt and say, um, we do have another issue that we want to talk to you about. So I hope we can, that's about the playground. So I do uh, hope okay. we can take a little bit of time. And I honestly, the, these comments have been great. So I don't want to just, I just want to say, please don't leave yet. <laughs> well, so I need to leave my house by 10 after three. So I need yeah. to be done by three o'clock. So we have about 20 minutes. Um, and okay, so the playground would be fine. I just want to, I mean, Saren usually has really good stuff to say. So either she's very happy or she doesn't even hear us. <laughs> I don't know. Um, are you there, Saren? Uh-oh. No. Nope. No. Nope. I don't oh, see God. her uh, there. I don't see her. And I don't see her in attendees either. So she must oh. have had to leave. Um, oh. Jim, do you have can... any... Does, is Jim there? Did Jim leave? I thought I saw him. Oh, looks like he's left as well. Oh, my God. You know what? Um, it's possible that we'll have to... I don't know what's going on with the connection. I had a lot of trouble getting in, and they might have gotten kicked out. Um, so, okay, go on with the playground. But at the moment, there's just two of us here. Your input would be helpful. Yeah, okay. and, if, and, and we're happy to reconvene um, okay. at, at your convenience. So, okay. so um, I don't I don't know if you're familiar with you know uh, <clears throat> kind of current current playground design and surface. Um, typically, if you if uh, Jessica's boundless playground will be a great example of it. The other one is in Amherst Center, where it's on a much smaller scale, but it's the rubberized surface yeah. that protects from fall right and yeah um so so there i i we, we've been asked to look at um what's called engineered wood fiber also known as wood chips um just bigger or what we typically use for um it just seems to be the preferred solution in many communities it's called poured in place uh Right, so poured in place. Poured, poured in place. Uh, I don't know what that is. I have no idea. Okay, it's that rubber. It's that rubber, soft rubber surface. Oh that yeah, is, the one that they use at the yes. playground. Okay, right. It's, it's made. It's, it's made. It's what's used made at Jessica's rubber. boundless playground. Yeah. Exactly. I haven't seen right. Jessica's playground at all. Um, have you been? Have you? And there's the one in Amherst Center. The that one is on Kendrick a much Park. Smallest. Yes. Yeah, yes. I haven't looked. I I know the one at the Healy School in Somerville. I've seen that because my grandson goes to it. Uh -huh. um, nice. Um, so, but and it's very new, and I, I there's a lot of rubber there. It even smells like rubber. Oh, well, that's not good. Typically, <laughs> it should, shouldn't smell like rubber. Shouldn't smell. Like rubber. <laughs> Should not smell like rubber. But um, so so typically um. You know the preferred the preferred place surface is what's called this pour in place rubber surface. Um, it's very easy to use. It has uh, it's very easy to use with accessibility or mobility devices such as wheelchairs. It does provide great impact and shock absorption. It yeah. provides consistent impact absorption, therefore a good longer term solution. Good news is animals don't find this material very appealing at all. So uh, unlike wood chips, right? They're they're yep. not interested yep. in it, and it it you know generally low. They don't use it as a bathroom. Cost. Correct, correct. <laughs> uh, and it's generally low maintenance costs over time, and it's easily repaired. You know, some of the disadvantages are that it is it is ex expensive, relatively speaking, to install. 
uh, it needs to be kept clean and swept regularly. And it does require professional setup, which is part of the cost of the project that we've already incorporated. Um, some, some folks feel that because it is rubber, that uh, wood fiber or these large wood chips are more environmentally friendly and, and more environmentally appropriate. And the benefits of engineered wood fiber is that it's easy to install. It, it does provide a good impact absorption and it does stay in place better than loose filled materials, not the port in place, but loose filled materials. These are larger wood chips as opposed to the smaller wood chips in when I was growing up, right? Like yep. um, some of the disadvantages are it's made from completely new wood, right? So if we're talking about uh, environmental, we're creating new wood. Um, it can hide insects and other pests. I guess you could say uh, animals or dogs might find it very attractive as well. Uh, uh, micro, uh, let's see, um, more, it, it's more expensive than wood chips and it's expensive to maintain, right? How so big are school, the pieces? Ah, that's a good question. Um, I'm measuring with my hand. I'm not, that's not helpful. Uh, they're, they're probably, Tim, you're going to speak. They're on the scale of, um, the, 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 between an inch and two inches of the larger chips The there's the size of the chips is controlled by the manufacturing process. And that would makes it a little bit different than loose fill, but it's an inch to two inches at the largest, but they vary in size. And what are the corners like? Uh, they are not sharp. Uh, they're, I mean, they're not splinters, but it, it is wood chips. They're not, you know, each individual piece is not rounded. Uh, that That is not the case at all. So if you're a little boy running from another kid and you go take a, as they say, take a powder, yeah. like, like, right. <laughs> and you're not, and you're wearing shorts. Mm -hmm. Um, What's going to happen to your knees? Uh, it is an abrasive material. There is no question compared to the rubber. And if you're in a wheelchair, it seems to me that it's not as I'm not a wheelchair user. And I'm, the two people we have who are somehow disappeared. But if, it how do wheelchairs move in it? Without constant maintenance, it is very problematic for mobility devices, wheelchairs, etc. So I don't know what you want us to say, and we aren't able to take a vote because we only have two people. So you might want to come back with that particular question, but it sounds like a no-go to me on the wood chips. What about you, Elise? Yeah, I have to agree, and I am going to have to buzz out pretty soon. Yep. Yeah, I, I really do. I have to be somewhere. I have to agree. Go. But, so but why don't I, we do I, this? I'd love to have you come back for that particular conversation, because it yeah. sounds like you need allies and we'll be happy to try to be that for you. So perhaps some of the um, December meeting, but I would say what you should do is send us some pros and cons in writing. They actually um, prior... did. You did? Yes, we we will, yeah, we will. That's I okay, it. It, 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 it was sent afterwards. So. Um, and it was oh, I couldn't even open that. That was a PDF I, I, that my yes, my yes, screen reader wouldn't, wouldn't even open. You wouldn't understood. We'll we'll send it in and so that it's it's readable, Myra. Uh, some PDFs are perfectly fine. That one I couldn't even OCR with the special thing uh, that understood. that is like the second layer. So yeah, if you send us that in an accessible format, um, and we'll put you on. Do you need more than fifteen minutes if we have that in writing? Nope. Okay. If you want to give right. us a little more time, only if others who had to leave have any other comments or questions, we're happy to stay on for that. Okay. Um, I think Elise has to leave. I have to leave. Yeah, I do. And Pamela we'll and Asa, you're, we, I am, you know, like if you have anything to say, Pamela and Asa, you're not on the committee, but I don't care. You should say whatever you think. Thank and you. Jennifer, you're there too, right? Jennifer's still there. <laughs> I'm still here. Okay, so you're welcome. I didn't know. I can't see who's on, so I didn't mean to leave you out. Um, but I, um, 
it, yeah. you know, if you have anything to say right now would be the time. Um, I have one thing about, um, that's probably just, and it's a thing to just hold, hold in your minds, but um, my, own, uh, my own experience is in elementary school. Um, does the library have some sort of space that would be isolated from like the oh. main reading area? Good because, um, question. When I was in elementary school, um, like the sort of like sitting down, like reading time was like some sort of like psychological torture to me because like I just, when I was a kid, I hated people reading out loud to me because I just, I wasn't in control of the situation. Like I was great reading by myself, but I couldn't handle like someone reading out loud to me, which we can debate whether or not that should have warranted a diagnosis, but um, <laughs> it was just, I spent most of my time at the library and, to, and, my, and the, um, my library, the library staff wouldn't let me just go off and get my own book and find somewhere quiet to read. So I'd spend most of that time just curled up behind a bookshelf and like sort of like to pull sitting over my ears so I had to block out the noise. So if there was another child in my situation, is there a spot where they could just be allowed to pick out a book from the library and then just go to a quiet place to read outside of whatever story time is going on? Sorry, my, my mouse is doing all kinds of fun things here. So yes, we have, we have different areas within the library um, to create areas for, it could be for quiet areas. There's an area for um, soft seating, small group instruction. There's also an area for formal instruction area. So the library itself has a lot of different areas to accommodate the, the different types of learning. Is there only one area that's big enough to fit a class? Uh, formally, formally. So it actually has, you know, the tables and chairs for say 24 students with the interactive flat panel TV where the instructional media specialist could be giving a class about Yep. Certain, but certain if a teacher things, really. wants to bring a class to the library, the way these things work, the library is fully scheduled all the time. There's always a class and they're being taught. Um, and uh, at least in elementary schools, that's how they do it. So if you want to bring your third grade class to the library or your fourth grade class because you're doing a project and you want to show them something and you don't need a librarian, is there a place for you to bring your third grade class outside of the formal instructional space? Um, Currently, there there isn't what what we have found. So I should have even said at the very beginning. I think Margaret did this. The school is, is partially funded with our partner, the Mass School Building Authority, and they regulate what the size of certain spaces are based upon the student population. Yeah. So they have told us specifically, here's the size of your library. So we have worked hard with both librarians, principals um, on, on what goes into the library. It's amazing how many books you all have. Um, so, so a lot of the space currently is being laid out to house all of the books that you have. The stacks inside, the, not along the perimeter of the, of the library, yeah, but no, inside, they're, they're yeah. going to be on wheels. So the uh -huh. ones inside, so so you can't move them daily, right? It, they're heavy, yeah, yeah, yeah. the books in them, but right. um, they'll 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 be low. There'll be two or three shelves, but um, so so as we get closer to construction, personally, we would love to see a little more floor space for a little more flexibility and opportunities for different types of instruction. Yeah, that's um, a, that's a big flaw that there isn't a place. I'm surprised that elementary school teachers haven't said anything about that because uh, we don't have Amherst, much of a choice. I know. Yeah. I know. In, we're, in we're bound Somerville by... High School, this is ridiculous. The school I'm sorry, building guys, but I really have to go. Is, yeah, I have to go too. I'm just going to tell you. In Somerville High School, they barely have any books. That's crazy. It's all computers. That's awful. It's That's horrible. Awful. And it's what the school buildings, you know, building, you know, those people on that, on that, um, you know, the school building authority, don't necessarily know anything about how people teach. Anyway. Yeah, that's um, awful. But Margaret, anyway, thank you. Anyway, so and, we do need to do this. Thank you. I think, thank you so much. I think thank we do so need much. to have you come back. Please send us the stuff about uh, about the, the uh, playground. Yeah. And I think we'll ask media questions at the next one. And um, 
I don't know what time would be best for us for you because we need to have another presentation as well. So um, sure, we'll, we'll coordinate with Pamela, and then what okay. would be really helpful if you guys could think about the areas that you want to us to focus on, so that we can okay. make this yep. a more focused conversation, especially those that. Okay. We, oh, we, we didn't talk about an art room off. either. There must be one somewhere. But there is an talk. art room. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great okay. day. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye. Have a good day, everyone.